Mayor Elect, will you raise your right hand? I, Thomas P. Coe. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof. And will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Thomas P. Coe. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all of the duties. Discharge and perform all of the duties. That come upon me as Mayor of Quincy. Coming upon me as Mayor of Quincy. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. Agreeable to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. The laws of this Commonwealth. The laws of this Commonwealth. And the ordinances of the City of Quincy. And the ordinances of the City of Quincy. So help me God. So help me God. I, Thomas P. Coke, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Members of our state delegation, city councils, members of the school committee, honored guests, citizens of Quincy, friends all. First, I'd not be standing here today without the support of my wife Christine, my children Cornelius, Tom Jr., and Abigail. Incidentally, Tom Jr. told me I should be sworn in and make sure I say that it's Thomas D. Coke Sr., not to be confused with him. <laughs> A couple of years ago, my mother said to me in jest that for 37 years, I was Dick Koch's wife. Now I'm Tom Koch's mother. <laughs> well, today I stand here as Dick and Simone's proud son. Thank you, Corporal Delury. For your service, I want to take this moment to thank all of our servicemen and women whose sacrifices make mornings like this possible. Today we especially remember Kara Durkin, who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Members of her family are here today, and we honor your strength and dignity in this time of grief. And I would ask each of our former mayors to stand, please. Mayor Walter J. Hannon, Mayor Joseph J. Larea, Mayor Francis X. McCauley, Mayor James A. Sheets. Each one of you answered the call to serve, and the city owes you a debt of gratitude. I especially want to expect, extend my best wishes to Mayor William Phelan. Mr. Mayor, we thank you for your service, and we wish you and your family all the best. This morning I stand before you, a kid from North Park Downs, blessed beyond measure with wonderful family, friends, and now the opportunity to serve the city we love as your mayor. I am humbled by the trust you have placed in me and excited by the challenges that lie ahead. As we prepare to face these challenges together, let us remember the words spoken by John Fitzgerald Kennedy more than a half century ago. Today, every citizen, regardless of his interest in politics, holds office. Every one of us is in a position of responsibility. And in the final analysis, the kind of government we get depends on how we fulfill those responsibilities. Every citizen holds office. I believe those powerful words still ring true today as we set a new course for our city. The great forefathers of America built Quincy on that commitment. And we owe it to them and every generation that followed 
to carry out that tradition. Most importantly, we owe it to the next generation, which will learn from our example. I ask each and every citizen of Quincy to get involved. Get involved in your government, get involved in your schools, get involved in your church, get involved in your neighborhood. <laughs> Each and every one of us has a responsibility today to shape the Quincy we want for tomorrow. So let's get to work right now and face our challenges head on. We see too many of our young people and their families destroyed by drug abuse. We cannot sit idly by and lose a generation of our young people to this scourge. Within the next month, I will appoint a task force of law enforcement, educators, clergy, nonprofit agencies, and citizens to develop a plan to fight this poison that affects far too many of our children. Congressman Delahunt and District Attorney Keating have both placed their support in this effort, and I thank them for their assistance. There are parents, friends, and family members who began this battle on their own. They will no longer fight alone. There is no easy solution, and it is a problem that will not disappear overnight but we must begin. Every citizen holds office, and we need your help. I hear your call about overdevelopment in our neighborhoods, and I hear your concerns about constant traffic gridlock on our streets. I feel strongly that we must act to protect our neighborhoods, the very neighborhoods that give our city its unique character. I also recognize that we must address the need for new tax revenue. To balance these interests, we must be clear where we want new development. Crown Colony, Fort Shipyard, and downtown Quincy all hold great potential for the future. And those are the areas we should and will focus on our growth. I will work with the City Council on legislation that will limit development in our neighborhoods and craft a full citywide traffic and parking plan. In addition, I will ask a group of citizens to work directly with my administration to undertake the largest overhaul of the city's zoning, building, and design regulations, at least a generation, to develop a vision for the Quincy we want today and tomorrow. Every citizen holds office, and we want your help. task faces a community than educating its children. It is said the classroom is the great equalizer, and we must do everything possible to keep it that way. As a city, we must continue to pursue excellence in our schools so that every precious child has a chance to succeed. We must provide a safe and functional educational environment. Our school building projects have languished too long. We will finish the new Quincy High School on time and on budget, and we will work together to build a new Central Middle School and address the needs of Sterling. The time is now, and the responsibility is ours. 